Hi guys, here I'm going to show you the three best tricks for adding alternate row colors to your data in Excel. This will work for existing data that's already in Excel, as well as a couple different ways to have it automatically add row colors every time you add new data to a current data set. It's pretty darn cool. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Okay, so let's go with the first method. It's really easy, really cool, and it's going to cover most scenarios when you want to add alternating row colors to your data. So here we have a sample data set, nothing special here, just where every row is for something different. So different stores in this case. Now, all you want to do here, very easy, is either select any cell within your data set or select the entire data set. It's up to you. Here I'll select one cell within it. Go to the Insert tab and click Table. So, or you can see there the shortcut Control T. So what we're going to do is to convert it into sort of a table data set. Here we have this little guy here. You just tell Excel, make sure the data set is selected correctly. And then check My Table Has Headers if you have a header row like this. And I do, so hit OK. And check it out. Alternating row colors audit, added automatically. No issues, no fuss, easy peasy. Now, the table data format or data type in Excel allows you to do a lot of things. I'm not going to cover all of those things, but if you want to find out more about that, just click anywhere in the table, and you'll get this little thing up here, Table Tools and Design, and you can do a bunch of cool stuff. Convert it to Arrange, Remove Duplicates, Insert Slicer, Export, blah, 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 do some things over here. But for our case, where we want to alternate row colors, it's important to go over to Table Styles. Click the drop-down arrow, and we have many different options for different ways to highlight the rows, or just different colors to use. So choose one that works well for you. You have lots of different options. Or we can go down here to New Table Style, or if you like, just click Clear and you will have no more alternating row colors, but you'll still have a table format. However, that's not what we want. We want to keep the alternating row colors. Now, if you don't want the table format, if you don't want to use all the cool things that it can do, very simple. Just click anywhere in here. Go to Convert to Range. So, let's see. Do you want to convert it to a normal range? Yes, I do. Now you can see if I click anywhere in here, we do not get the design tab. We can't do stuff with a table. However, the alternating row colors stayed there. So whatever format you choose, then just click convert to range and you've got alternating row colors and it's nice and pretty. So there, it could take just a few seconds to do that. You select in your data set, go to insert, table, yes. Design, table styles, choose what you want. That's ugly, but whatever, just an example. Then convert to range, yes. So less than 30 seconds and you have alternating row colors on your entire data set. Now I'm gonna convert it back to a table and show you a really cool thing you can do with tables. Let's first go ahead and get rid of this formatting so we can start fresh, clear formats. Okay, it took away the dollar signs, but let's not worry about that. Easy peasy to get back. So select in here. Insert, Table, My Table Has Headers, yes, OK. Choose your table style, okie dokie. Now, without doing anything, if I go down here and I want to input Store 9, watch what happens the moment I hit Enter. It automatically expands the table, it automatically adds the alternate row colors, it is awesome. So using the table format really makes your life so easy if you want to use alternating row colors. It's awesome. I can do whatever I want, more, 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 and more. It's really great. We don't even have to use all the other features that you can use or that tables allow you to use on your data set. Easy peasy. So this is the first tip. This is the first trick. It's the easiest way to do it perhaps even the best way. Notice, however, when I do delete this, the row colors stay there. So there are a few caveats to that. And let's move to the next example, which is odd even. So the next examples are going to require a bit more effort than just converting your data range to a table, but I want to show them to you in case it works better for your situation. 
So here we have what I'm just going to call odd even. And this exhibits a really good technique that you can use in many different cases in Excel. So we have our data here. We want to alternate the row colors. And what we're going to do is just add a helper column. A helper column is just an additional column that has data that isn't, let's say, the original data set. It's something that's going to allow us to do additional work on our data table. Let's call it odd even. And what I want to do here is to use a very simple formula, either is odd or is even. Is odd returns true if the number is odd, or is even returns true if the number is even. So very, very simple. Let's go with is even. Now I want to return true if the number is even. And what I want to input here is the row number. So all I have to do for that is the row function. And I don't have to select a cell for this. If I just do open and closing parentheses, it'll return the current row. So what this is doing right now, let me close one more set of parentheses for is even. What this is going to do is row, the row function will return two because we're in row two. The is even function will say, is that an even number or not? It is, so it's going to return true. Hit enter and we get true. And when I copy this down, it'll be true, false, true, false, true, false. So is even row, so it doesn't change for any of the row. In many examples, you may see somebody go here and then put a cell reference within the current row. You do not need to do that. And in fact, sometimes that can be confusing for people. So just leave it like that. Easy peasy. So now that we have it like this, we can go click anywhere in the data set. Doesn't matter. Go to data tab and click filter. Then we can go over here to our helper column, odd even. Let's select either all false or all true. Let's go with true. Now we have only the true rows. We can select them. We can go to the Home tab. And we can give them a nice background color. Then we can go up here. And we can clear the filter. Now we have a nice, a beautiful alternating row colors. If you want, you can go ahead and delete the helper column. Doesn't matter. You can go ahead and remove the filtering. Doesn't matter. Up to you. We just added the helper column so that it made it easy for us to add alternating row colors. And you may say, well, it's easy if I just select all the rows here on my own. I don't need to add a helper column. But if you have a data set with 100,000 rows, it's much easier to add a helper column. And as you can see here, it takes less than a minute, actually it take less than 30 seconds to do once you understand how it all works. And if you want to color the false ones, also just easy down here, uncheck select all. Select false, hit OK, select these dudes, and add some color. I don't want to add color to them, so I'm not going to. Clear the filter. So easy peasy, just the formula either is even or is odd, and then inside of it, row. And if you want to change this to work with alternating row columns, you can do the same thing. You just replace row with column. So we're not going to be talking about that in this tutorial, but it's very easy to do that. Just replace row with column and then make the data go left to right instead of up and down. So that's it for the odd even example. Now let's move on to the last example. So I'm going to leave this column in here for reference when you download the file. So the next one, let's call it conditional formatting. And this example, we're going to start with a blank worksheet. And let's say that we want to have the row colors added, alternating row colors, when we go ahead and add the data. But we don't want to use a table. We don't want to worry about that jazz. Well, here we're going to use conditional formatting for it. And it requires a few steps. And it may seem confusing at first, so I'm going to try and explain it as simply as I can. So first things first, this is not a comprehensive tutorial for conditional formatting, so I may gloss over a few topics. But the main thing for conditional formatting, what it is, is it will change the color of a cell or its appearance based on what you input into that cell. So we are going to use conditional formatting to highlight this entire row the moment the user inputs data into cell A2. So the condition is there's data in this cell right here. Once the condition is met, we highlight the row. 
How do we figure out if that condition has been met? Well, we have to use a formula. And here is a formula that I've already made. I'm going to copy paste it right here and we shall take a look at it. We have a few things going on here. And function, mod function, row function, this funky little dude over here. So let me try and make it as easy as possible. We have the and function. The and function, or and before I do that, every formula that you use for conditional formatting must evaluate to true or false. That's exactly how it has to be. Can't be any other way. The and function is going to return true or false based on the conditions that are tested within it. So we have two things to test for, this one right here and this one right here. If both of these evaluate to true, then the AND function will return true. So here we're going to test if A2 does not equal nothing. So this is empty double quotes right here. This means does not equal, and this is a cell reference to A2. That's how we test if the user input any data in cell A2. This one right here, it just tests if we're on an odd if we are currently in an odd or even row. So we use the row function again without anything inside of it. That's going to return the current row. And then we have mod or the modulus operator, which is going to divide that by two. And then if there's no remainder, this will return zero. So let me just quickly, modulus can be kind of confusing. Let's quickly put this guy right here equals mod like this and you can see that it returns zero because there's no remainder after it if I go down here to row three it returns one because there's a remainder after it so that's all it is it's going to be zero one zero one zero one that's how we actually add the alternating row colors so this is kind of like the is odd or the is even function that we used a moment ago and in fact you could actually use that function here and make life a little bit easier so right here, we could use the is odd or is even with row inside of it, just like we did on that tab. You can do that, but I wanted to show you this more complex guy because it allows you to add the colors, not just every other row, but maybe every two rows, every three rows, every four rows, just by changing the two to however many rows you want to use, three, four, five, whatever you want to do. It's a really powerful little thing right here, the mod function. And in combination with a row, it allows you to do some pretty cool things. And the equal sign zero here just checks if it equals zero or not. And this is what allows it to return true or false instead of just zero or one. So if this here equals zero, then it returns true. If it does not equal zero, it returns false. So that's how we get a true false test right here. And then a true false test right here. So that's it for the explanation for this formula. And like I said, if this dude's a little complicated, just use the is odd or the is even example from the previous worksheet tab in this tutorial. But now let's go ahead and let's get this guy and let's copy it. Oh, one more thing. It's very important that what I did here is I put a dollar sign in front of the column, but not in front of the row. What we want to do is apply conditional formatting across all of these columns and as many rows as our data set will get to in size. We want it to change with the rows. So we want this cell reference A2 to change with the rows, so it'll be A3, A4, A5. But we do not want it to change with the columns. So that's why we have the dollar sign in front of the column, so it won't change. But no dollar sign in front of the row, so it will change. So let's copy this. Delete this guy from here. The next step is to select the range where your data will go. Select the range that is much larger than your data set. And that means that it'll continue to have alternating row colors for as long as you need to add data to it. Once you've selected it, go to the Home tab, Conditional Formatting, New Rule. Go to Use a Formula to determine which cells to format. And we want to paste this in here. Also, it's important, A2 should be the first row in the data set that you selected. Otherwise, it can mess up the conditional formatting. So it's row 2, and that's the first row that we selected. It doesn't really matter if it's column A is the first column in this example, but it's helpful. 
So once you've pasted that in there, let's go to format. Let's say fill, let's make it a nice light gray color. Okay, okay. Now nothing happened, but let's go ahead and add some data. Store one, bam. How cool is that? Store two, we should have nothing here, nothing. Store three, and it fills in again. This is maybe my favorite way to add alternating row colors because you can set it up so that the worksheet looks completely empty. We don't have a data table like for the first example. We don't have to add a filter column like the second example. We just have conditional formatting. It sits there in the background and it just chills out until we want to add data and then it pops up with our alternating row colors. It's awesome. I love this. And if we delete this, it should go away. Bye-bye, because it no longer meets the condition. So it's really, really, really an awesome way to add alternating row colors to your data. Conditional formatting formula. Make sure that's good. OK. So now you'll have this here to use as a reference when you download the file. OK. Everything is working fine. All right, so I took a little extra time just to put that over here so you'll have these formulas in there for reference when you go ahead and download the file. And I highly recommend that you download this file so you can see all of these three examples. The conditional formatting example, the odd even example, and then the table example. So I would say start out with table if you already have your data set because it's just easy peasy. And then just convert it back to a range if you only want to keep the formatting. But now you know three different ways. I would say the three best ways, the three best tricks to add alternating row colors to your data set in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.